Miles Smith, number two. Nolan Bertain, number 32. Miles Smith, of course, out of Houston, Texas. Nolan Bertain, formerly of UAB. Peyton Smith out of Corpus Christi, the guard. Perry Francois out of North Miami, Florida. And Elijah Schmidt out of Klein, Texas, former high school teammate of Miles Smith. It'll be Iloco and Perry Francois on the tip. Perry controls. Willis Wilson, head coach of your Islanders. Ron Cottrell, the head coach of the Huskies. Bertain with the basketball for the Islanders. Huskies coming out in a 2-3 zone, it looks, to start this game. Peyton Smith, little drop. Loose ball, who's got it? Peyton Smith got caught in midair, thought he could get to the other side of the rim, then tried to unload it. Francois could not secure it. Gates, this is what Gates does. Yes. Gates gets rid of it as quickly as he can. And as quickly as he can get it, he will get rid of it, and he'll get rid of it towards the rim. Three-pointer for Jalen Gates. Francois now with Yoloko. Quick swing, three ball this time. Miles Smith with an answer dribble. And that's Tied just fitting. You have two teams in the top four and three-point shooting for a percentage in the conference. It's going to come down to who can defend it better. And that is where the Islanders theoretically are in a better situation. Yes. They are number two in the conference in defending the three-point line. Houston Baptist dead last. At Nolan Bertain got caught. He was chasing Jalen Gates, who was looking to launch. Perry Francois did a great job stepping up to stop the shot, but then Bertain, following the play, ends up landing on Gates. Yeah, maybe an unnecessary foul. I like the aggressiveness. Not necessarily that it was unnecessary, just avoidable. You know, avoidable. I think it's probably the better phrase. Gates with it. Thought about it for a moment. He'll pull the trigger again, and he'll launch again. Guess what? He's not going away. The Gates family, you you may recall from the movie Hoop Dreams, his father, oh, really? William, his father William Gates. Really? Yes. That's, that, that's exactly who it wow. is. Wow. Nolan Bertain, three. How about that one? Just off the mark, long board, Jalen Gates, five, three Huskies. Quan Murphy will give it up to the corner. Stent for three. That's well off, and Peyton Smith's going to take it. Trans chance to run. Peyton to Elijah, lays it in, will it go? No, Francois with the board, had it stripped. Elijah with it again, and a three-point play the hard way, potentially. Nice patience there. I love Elijah Schmidt going very hard into the paint there. Perry Francois coming over the back of Peyton Smith. We've seen Perry on numerous occasions with that put-back slam. I think that's what kind of might have been, oh, kind of might have. That's a good phrase. I think I'll patent that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think that was on his mind. Yes. Elijah Schmidt knocks down the free throw. We've hit one from distance. Now the old-fashioned way, the three-point play. Murphy looks inside. Yoloko kicks it out. Stent back to Yoloko. And he travels. Nice help. Miles Smith yep. coming baseline. Yoloko getting caught. I said it on Wednesday to you, Stephen. I think his, his, his most priceless asset, Miles Smith, his awareness. He's so aware of what is going on on the court. And the crazy thing, that's kind of his job. When you've yes. got that, you've got that, uh, you're, you're the, the, the floor general on the offensive side, but defensively, especially if you're working baseline, you're the one who's supposed to see everything. Oh, yes. Skip out, kick, quick swing, Miles Smith three again, long three. Got it. It's good. Nice extra pass. Islanders starting to find a rhythm. Miles, Nine five. Miles has been great the last few games, hasn't he? Absolutely. McKenzie to the corner, Stent. In deep to Yoloko. And another three. This time, Quan Murphy knocks it down. Ian DeBose getting ready to come in. And it's going to be a turnover off of Francois. Islanders 9-8. Leading by one. And DeBose has checked in for Stent. DeBose, the conference leader in points per game. Number six in assists per game. Number nine in field goal percentage, eight in rebounds per game, nine in free throw percentage, ten in steals per game. He's talented, and you're going to have to contain him. He kind of does a little bit of everything <laughs> is all I'm getting at. <laughs> That's a good uh, good assessment. Only a junior. We're going to see him for a while. Only four wins this year for HBU. One of them coming against, of course, Texas A&M Corpus Christi at the Sharp Gym in Houston. Murphy. Drop off to Yoloko, skips it back out to DeVos. They're gonna get rid of it again to Murphy. Murphy for three, and he knocks it down. Kind of a side spinner too. Did you see yeah. how the rotation on that Weird ball? Weird rotation. These guys can nine. shoot. 
I've always said this is a great shooting building. Oh, yes. Tony Lewis in the low post. Peyton Smith got a fortunate bounce. Off the back iron this time for Miles Smith. 11-9 Huskies, DeBose. And that's going to be a block that said it's on the way up. So they're going to call the blocking foul on Peyton Smith. The block was clean. Yeah. That ball was still on the way up. Wasn't going down. Con Ron Cottrell, the head coach, uh, just a little grin on his face looking at the official like, really? Yeah. You really think that was on the way up? I do. But yeah. Wasn't going down, that's for sure. DeBose. Makes it a 12-9 game. Iggy Hunt's going to check in for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Jordan Hairston also going to come on. Another outstanding shooter for Texas A&M Corpus oh, yeah. Christi, who's had a great year as a freshman. Second leading scorer coming into today's game. Hairston averaging 12.4 points per game, not just on the season, but in conference play as well. DeBose hits both free throws. Excited to see what Jordan can do against the, the league's worst three-point shooting defense. Well, in the first game, it was Harrison to lead the way for Texas A&M Corpus. He was the leading scorer. Indeed, Tony Lewis. Here comes the double. Lewis kicks it out to Harrison. Off the bench. <laughs> Off the bench. There we go. Doesn't even think right twice, does it? Doesn't even think twice. 13-12. And I love the trust that head coach Willis Wilson has in a young guy like that to come in and shoot the ball. Oloco, nice defense from the big fella, Tony Lewis, not letting Oloco really turn to the hole. That's going to be a fantastic matchup to keep an eye on all night. Tony just got to play him very disciplined. Don't get over aggressive. Don't mm -hmm. get caught in a foul situation. Tony Lewis, kick out Bertain. Bertain just short. Oloco with it. I thought Tony had him beat down low, could have made a move. I don't think he really realized it. Jumper up, no good. Rebound, Miles. Miles Smith. Nice to the back pass. door, cut, nicely done. Nice pass, great vision there from Miles. In a lot of cases, Bertain will shoot to a corner for the mm. three-point shot. This time he rolled to the hole. The defense thought he went to the yep. corner. Beautiful look. Islanders back up, 14-13. Jordan Harrison on the steal. He's going to go up against Gates, pull the trigger in mid-range. Does he get the oh. bounce? He does. That's what they call the shooter's roll. Yes, the nice American Banks in a roll. 16-13 to Bose. Now with it. Miles Smith taking that away. Three ball. Another one, Quan Murphy. And they are. <laughs> I mean, my Quan goodness. Murphy has hit three threes. Murphy, a 32% free th uh, three-point shooter. Only 18 makes on the year, and he's made three today. They're four or five from three. Hot early. Tony Lewis feeling some double. Nice That's step no. through. Nice step through on Iloco. Got him up off the ground and went right under him. To get the lay in, 18-16. And I think, is it going to be a timeout? Timeout is taken. We'll take it as well. Islander basketball leading 18-16 over the Huskies here in the final game of the regular season here at the American Bank Center. Islanders win and in mm -hmm. as they're looking for a berth in that Southland Conference Tournament. Jeff Dubrov, Stephen King, more to come here on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas. And, of course, KDF 47, a Chris Six Sports production. It did, it's not. Mine was good. Was it? Yeah. I don't know. Close up this other stuff. It should be fun. I think it should be fun. I'm back to 13 12, though. But that's as more I refresh the further it goes back. I think yeah. it'll be okay. It'll be all right. What? <laughs> Where's your compliance guy? He's probably watching the game. Fourteen twenty-two remaining here in the first half. Islanders lead eighteen sixteen. Leading score for both teams is Quan Murphy with nine points. Murphy, interesting, and only a 32% three-point shooter. He is three of three from downtown thus far. Brandon Corpus Christi leading the charge with six. Miles Smith 
two of two from three-point range. Jordan Hairston quickly off the bench with five. Islanders shooting 63% from the floor thus far, 62% for Houston Baptist. It's been about offense so Oh, yes, far. and I think that's both what we expected. Both these teams can shoot the ball well from deep. But like we mentioned, the Islanders have the advantage defensive-wise. Let's see when they can start getting some stops. Miles Pierre has checked into the game for Houston Baptist. Murphy, who's had the hot hand with the basketball, wants to drive. Nice, nice look across. Number 50, Ryan Gomes, a 6'10", 250-pound junior. Nice vision, but Nolan Bertain almost got a hand on that ball. It looked like he nice defense He rotated him. back. Now, when we played them, one of the biggest issues we had initially was on penetration getting the rotating defense because they were able to find guys across the lane. <laughs> In this case, it was similar. Bertain was just a half second late. Miles Smith into Iggy. Iggy looking to take it off. Can he get it? No. Staying with it. Nope. And they're going to call the tie ball. Possession arrow belongs to Houston Baptist. And Iggy just could not get an angle towards no. the rim. He was coming in at an awkward angle. Couldn't really muster up enough strength What to he get needed through. to be able to do was go to his left hand. Yeah. That's a move that we've seen more prevalent from, from Perry Francois. Yes. Loving his left hand. Pierre finds DeBose left side. Tied at 18. In the first game, the Islanders trailed at the half by 18. They've gotten off to a much better start against Houston Baptist. DuBose loses it out of bounds. For DuBose, one of the things he's also the team leader in is turnovers. But the thing about it is also in his hands the majority of the time, yes. too. Eventually, that's going to happen. But 3.7 per game, almost four turnovers per contest. Hairston left alone for a moment. Guess what? He just, he, you know, he's just a man that shoots with confidence. He's fantastic. For a freshman to have that mentality. Number 20 in field goal and scoring in the conference this year. He's been great. Thrown away. HBU tried to go backdoor cut to Pierre. Pierre trying to regain control. Ends up throwing it out of bounds. Gates is going to come back. Stent's going to come back. Murphy and McKenzie check out. Something that I think we didn't see in last in Wednesday's game was they, they weren't able to hit the ball early. Jordan Harrison especially was struggling from long range. It's nice to see that they've come out with a rhythm, try to keep that up here for the remainder of this half. 21-18, Jalen Gates has come back on too. That, it, I mean, a, a, a guy that, indeed, Tony Lewis now against Gomes, spinning on Gomes, strong, getting caught, but kicks it back out. Nice look, how about that? How about that look? Nolan Bertain, who was, in the past, automatic. I get that shot, I'm launching. No, he knows about that extra pass. Loose ball. Oh, Miles is open in the corner. Oh, they're going to give it to him. They're going to call the charge. DuBose. DuBose draws the call, much to the chagrin, pretty much of everybody to my left. Oh, life. yes. <laughs> I don't mind the aggressiveness. And, and just, just kind of watching the conversations between the coaches. I think even Ron Cottrell knew that was pretty bad. <laughs> Miles Pierre, though, was able to get through traffic to the rim. 24-20, Pierre's first bucket of the night. Bertain right side. Iggy Hunt is going to pull the trigger. Jump shot. Will it go? Perry, oh, nice board. Nicely. Oh, Tony, got to stay with. Got to get those to go. He's got, ah, he'll make up for it. He will. Good offensive rebound, though. Gates, I'm not kidding. He will launch from anywhere. Gosh, man, he is on fire. He will launch from anywhere, 24-23. It's eight points for him, two for two from beyond the arc. Not this time. Willis Wilson just saying, hey, we're settling for shots here. Let's get let's let's work a little harder. Pierre skipping across. Stent gives it up to DeBose in the corner. DeBose loops it in, deflected as they tried to go to Gomes, but well without it uh, outside of his reach. Bertain. Oh, gonna be blocked by Gomes. He went to that underhand look mm -hmm. and Gomes was able to stretch. I think and the foul is going to be called on Miles Smith, a three-point opportunity for DeBose. The bucket will count, 25-24. The score will be, I believe, 
once that is all settled in. Jave Lampkins looking to come on. Elijah Schmidt looking to come on. We'll reset the lineups and the score. Make sure we have everything correct when we return. Jeff Dubrov, Stephen King, Islander Basketball on the Islander Digital Network, Power Bay AP Texas, and on KDF 47, this Chris Six Sports production. That was just one of those, like he had on Wednesday, where he just missed one of those easy ones and they kind of turned around and put up six straight. See, they're good. I'm good. Twenty-five, twenty-four. the Huskies did go ahead on the make from Ian DuBose a moment ago as we were going to break. He'll go to the free throw line as well. HBU, they can score points. Yes. I just want to point out real quick, they can score tons oh, of yes. points, averaging 80.2 points per game, 81 points per in conference play, but their downfall is the fact they give up 94 points a game. Yeah, not only that, I mean, they give up the, they, they the worst three-point shooting defense in the conference. They're in dead last, and that's the opposite of the Islanders, where the Islanders are in second place. But today, we're, it doesn't matter if we're no. in, in that situation. Uh, five of six from three-point range, HBU thus far. DeBose misses the foul shot. So it still remains a one-point game, 25-24. Peyton Smith up against Jalen Gates. Schmidt, who has stepped out, looks, oh my goodness, tried to go inside and just tried to direct pass. And I, I think he might have anticipated Perry kind of sliding down the lane. Mm -hmm. But just kind of an unforced turnover by Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Got to play cleaner. DeBose, drop feed. Oh, that's He a traveled. Walk. That's a walk. That's he a did. Walk. He traveled on the baseline. It was a great look, great catch, but unfortunately for HBU, and that was Perry Francois, though, that forced that. Nice play coming over, contesting yeah. what would have been a tough shot, forcing the walk. Iyemi, Zach Iyemi for Houston Baptist. Just checked into the game. Lampkins. They get it in deep to, to Schmidt. Schmidt kick oh, out. nice move. Peyton Smith. Little fadeaway out the window. Kiss off the glass. DeBose picks up his dribble. Miles Pierre, he's looking for Ayemi. Francois. Oh, that's going to be a block goal 10. And I think it was a made bucket. I'm not sure if I had the best angle on it. After the goal 10, 27-26. Hairston trying to create an angle, gets it to the high post. Nothing there yet. Want to get that better angle. It's going to be a kick ball to reset the shot clock to 20. I mean, you as much as anyone there, we understand no game is easy. This is a this is a Husky team that just beat UIW on the road. They sure did. Just spoiled a senior day. Could possibly do it two in a row. They can shoot the lights out, and if they get they're, hot. They're not playing for anything. They're just they're no, playing that's for, what we mentioned. for pride to be a spoiler. Being a, it's going to go off the hands of the Islanders. Elijah Schmidt, he was coming in for the board. Three ball off the mark. Still a one-point contest with 9-19 remaining. Let's see if Willis Wilson puts in a uh, Tony Lewis here soon. I love when Tony's in. It seems as if. I just love the way he's been playing his effort provides just a spark off the bench, Stephen. Yeah, he's been rotating all of his bigs fairly regular. Mm -hmm. 
DeBose can't get the shot off. Ayemi. And a blocking foul. Oh, he was oh, well oh, inside oh, oh. the arc, you know. Yeah. In the restricted exactly area is what the they called it. Just said. 901 remaining. Yeah, Yemi will go to the free throw line shooting two. That is the 15th foul against the Islanders. Five fouls against AM Corpus Christi, only one thus far against HBU. <laughs> Excuse me. Miles Smith, Nolan Bertain getting ready to come back on. Harrison and Smith will check out. In that second game, in that first game, excuse me, at HBU, Islanders. Oh, my goodness, a bad pass all the way across. That's Miles Smith. It's a bad pass from Miles. As Jave was in the area and by himself, it was just a poor, yeah. poor attempt. So it's, it goes back to what we said earlier, unforced turnovers. Yes, and, and you never want those, but now you have two. You have to limit those and cut those out before things get worse. EAM, he couldn't control it. Quickly out to Miles Smith. He holds his pivot foot barely. And does he keep it? Yes, he does. Javay Lampkins thought about it. Gives it back up to Miles Smith. Gets into the lane. And he'll go to the free throw line. Took a hard hit. Going to be all right. Nice aggressiveness there by Miles. <laughs> I mean, you said it. Good job by him keeping that pivot foot down. It looked like he was, oh, he was skirting just a little bit. EAM, down. Yeah, EAM was called for the personal. His first, team second. Two shots coming up for Miles Smith, and Uloko is going to come on here momentarily, and Tony Lewis, who you were asking for, is getting ready to check back on as well. Miles Smith knocks it down, back to a two-point contest. Uloko on four. Iyemi. Perry Francois checking out, and there'll be another substitution. Is it Quan Murphy? Quan Murphy will come back on for Miles Pierre. One of the top free throw shooters in the Southern Conference. He takes Miles his time. Smith. Yeah, he's got a pre shot routine. Mm -hmm. He sticks to it. DuBose for three. It's good. Just a little, little abbreviated screen, and all he needed was just a little breathing room. 19 Tony Lewis points didn't per jump game. out there quickly enough. Five point lead now for the Huskies. Quan Murphy with the steal. They give it up to Gates. Gates thought it was a double dribble. They're going to say no, high jumper. It's nothing but the bottom for Jalen Gates. 34-28. I'm not sure Jalen Gates has hit rim. That was that was impressive. Yes. That Despite the fact it bodies. probably was a double dribble. Tony Lewis skips it back out. Jave Lampkins That's need it. a three. Got a three. Need a three. Got a three. 34-31. DeBose, drop feed, Yoloko, can't get it to go. Tony Lewis, quick outlet, gets it to Bertain. Little short shot in transition, nicely done, one point contest. Pretty shot We're down Nolan. five, four quick ones for AM Corpus Christi. Nice little 5-0 run. 7-0-3 remaining. Next stop, it should, I believe, be another media break coming up. DeBose hands off, well, thought he was going to hand off to Stint, gives it up to Quan Murphy instead. Yoloko, oh, he was rolling, nobody, nobody went for him. Kick out. Not Gates. this man. Oh my goodness. Wow. Everybody collapsed in the interior, and Yoloko wisely got it outside once again, and they found the open look with Gates. Elijah Schmidt with stent on him. Stent. Would just just that's a looks like a foul to me. Bertain tries to launch. Tipped out by Lampkins. Can he get there in time? No, he cannot. 37-33, timeout on the floor, 6.20 remaining. Jordan Hairston to return when we come back. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas and on KDF 47. Quickly, thank you to HEB, the country and its reach, and 
Fairfield and its Suites at Moore Plaza, Evans Glass Service, Chris Six Communications, The Waves Resort, Dave and Buster's Network Cabling Services, and of course, AEP Texas. Stay with us, more coming your way. That DeBose kid looks like he's 40. Yeah. He's only a junior. Should have seen him as a freshman. He looked exactly the same. He was a <laughs> beast of a freshman. And I'm sitting there going, why is he at HBU? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, I, I mean, he, just, he was just a very talented guy. Is he and from the area? Ian? I'm trying to remember. <coughs> I got it right here as well. Uh, Ian is from Durham, North Carolina. That's right. We had, a, we had this... We had a pipeline. We had a North Carolina pipeline going in and out of uh, HBU for a while. There was like four or five kids at least. With 6.20 remaining here in the first half, Huskies lead your Islanders 37-33, and the Huskies have just always been a tough matchup for Texas A&M Corpus Christi for some reason or another. And when you have players like Jalen Gates just shooting lights out, like we're seeing here thus far, uh, Gates 5 of 5 from the field, 3 of 3 from downtown, and as you said earlier, has he hit the rim I don't yet? Think he, I don't think he has. I mean, you give that guy an inch, he's going to take a mile, and he's proving it today. Quan Murphy, 3 of 3. There's a the team shooting 76% from the floor. And if you're the Islanders, you got to say, look, we're down by four points. There's still plenty of time left in this first half, but that's a silver lining. They're not going to continue to shoot that way, or at least you expect them not to the rest of the game. Crazy things, man. Quan Murphy defended by Bertain. And there's going to be an illegal screen on Yuloko. They were freeing up Gates. That was the intended shooter, but Yuloko on the moving screen. Texas A&M Corpus Christi defensively uh, on the season. Looking at it, 44, per, uh, excuse me, 42%. They were fourth in the conference on the year, number three in the conference during, during South of the conference play, Elijah Schmidt. Nice little baby jump hook. DeBose, oh my goodness. <laughs> Ian DeBose knocks down another. And they just continue to be on fire. Yeah, they are looking, I mean. 40-35. They are seeing the rim really nicely right now. Someone indicated from the bench, like, short. And DeBose is like, who said short? Not happening. Miles Smith trying to free himself up from DeBose. They have to get it in deep. They'll find Tony Lewis. Trying to spin baseline on Yuloko. He'll step through. Can't get it to go. Elijah nice Smith, play. though, on the follow. Nice Way to stay up. with the play, Elijah. It's a three-point game, one possession. Yes. Again, the team is shooting well over 70% HPU, but they're only up by one possession. Trying to back in on Miles Smith. Wants to go baseline. Knocked away Elijah Smith. Who's come up with it? Tony Lewis to nice hands by Elijah. Really nice awareness. Miles. Quan Murphy is going to tie him up. They're going to tie him up, and a possession will go to the Islanders. Good play by Quan Murphy. Because he got hands on ball immediately. Iggy's going to come back in for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. 4.57 remaining. That length. Length for length, as a matter of fact, as Schmidt checks out. But a big play. Again, the, left, the baby left-handed jump hook from Schmidt, but the defensive play on the baseline. Nice overall possession for him there. Needs to get it in. Loops it up over the top. Miles Smith to the corner. Nothing there yet. Bertain will give it back up. Miles Smith not open. Iggy Hunt with the left hand. Will it go? No, tipped out of bounds by Stint. For of Corpus Christi, fortunately. Iggy, I think it was one of those things Iggy did not believe how open he was. Yeah. Expecting more pressure from a defense. A little more defense. contact, and he leaned yeah. a little bit. He was leaning, looking to maybe kind of, sometimes you look for a little balance mm -hmm. off of a lean. Hairston finds Lewis. Lewis, ah, again, just almost almost taken away by Iggy Hunt. So a couple of interior plays for the Islanders, unsuccessful. DeBose, defended by Iggy, up faking on the nice drop feed back door. Floater, no good. Nice rebound, Miles Smith. Quick outlet. Numbers aren't there immediately. 
And that's going to be moving. Oh, he was still moving. Wow. 40-37. They're going to say that. that the charge is on Iggy Hunt. Ian DeBose draws the call. And Willis Wilson looking for an explanation. I mean, he, his feet were not even close to remaining. set. Yeah, 415 remaining. Not even close. 40. It's going to be Murphy over the timeline. Chasing Bertain. Gates with it. My, it's it's, un, it's, it's unconscionable. Um, it, the defense was good. Uh, the defense, the chase off the screen was within millimeters of uh, the guy. There's, it's just Gates knocked down the shot. What can you do? 43-37. Timeout on the floor. 3.56 remaining. We'll take the break. Islander basketball returns in a moment here on KDF 47. This Chris Six Sports production. That was God, crazy. That, that was unbelievable. It was almost like you, I felt like I knew. I was like, I was going in. They might be shooting 80% from the floor. Let's see where we're no, at right shooting now. They're shooting 90% from three. And 75% from the floor. That's not going to last. And they're only up six? They're shooting 90% shooting from three, and they're only up six? It's insanity. That's insane. That's ridiculous. My God. But right now, we're on like a 100-point pace right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Easily. Nice flip-flop, Adam. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Not a chance. The other, the guy in the women's game came really close. Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. That shot went down. That was insane. That was a terrible charge call. With 3.56 remaining, the Islanders trail the Huskies here in the first half, 43-37. And it's been insane shooting from the Huskies. Now, some of them have been open looks. Some of them have been through the offensive set. Some of them have just been mind-boggling, you know, shots with defense in your face, hand up your nose type of shots that continue to fall. 75% uh, from the floor, 90% from the arc. there 9 of 10 from downtown. And, and when those types of shots just fall, you just have to tip your hat to the to the shooter, but Jalen Gates, I mean, my goodness, six of six, four of four from downtown, and he, I don't think he's hit the rim. <laughs> Jalen Gates, number two in the Southland Conference in free throw percentage, number three in three point percentage, number three in threes made. But you got to remember the Southland's got a couple of great three point shooters. Mm -hmm. The kid from McNeese. Number one in the country. Oh, nice step. And just rolled off the rim, though. DeBose bringing it up against Bertain. Looks inside for Yoloko. Blocked nice. by Tony Lewis. Tony Lewis, hand on the ball, knocks it, through, knocks it through. 324 remaining. That's been a fun matchup to watch. Those two are so evenly matched all around down low, it looks like. Now we're bringing in a little bit smaller size as far as height than Jalen White, but in strength, crazy. Yes. Yoloko gives it up to Murphy. Iggy kind of caught behind Yoloko. DeBose, any That's step. Oh, he's walk. traveled. That little hop step yeah. back, and you see Murphy's little throw. Yeah. His three went in as well. W waved off. <laughs> yeah, it went in as well. I'm not kidding. I mean, they are hitting their shots today. 3.05 remaining. Miles Smith. Islanders need, need a bucket here. Miles into the lane. Kick out Bertain. Jalen White's going to get a long defense, uh, offensive board. Oh, I'm not sure about that pass, but he got it. He got it where he needed there it. it. Jalen White, I wasn't sure what he was doing no. on that cross court pass. It came in a little <laughs> shot, right. but he found the hot shooter. Back to three, 40-43. White, Jalen Gates, I mean. There it there is. There it is. You got to get oh, the board now, guys. And not go out of bounds <laughs> in the process. So nice. What's recovery. crazy is that was a nice look too. It was a nice move to get himself free. 
Hairston. Into Jalen. White. White. Strong, muscular move, and they're going to call him for the offensive oh, foul. Leaning gosh. hard. They said he rolled right through Philip McKenzie, the six foot five junior. White is. That's one of the things. Sometimes there's a there's a little bit of uh, I'm not going to call it discrimination, but sometimes there's just an assumption if you're the big strong guy yes. that you you charge. You know they're not going to give you that the the benefit of maybe a little bit of agility. Gates, who finally missed his shot, gives it up to Lawoko. Now to Debose. Miles Smith nicely goes over the screen on the defensive side. Debose to McKenzie. Back out Murphy. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Yoloko setting the screen, and that's going to be an illegal screen. And that's not on Yoloko. It's going to be called against Yoloko, but it's not his fault. Quan Murphy left early before the screen yes. was set. And by the way, Quan Murphy made the third. And he made it again? He made it again. Oh, my goodness. He made it again. It was weighed up. But Yoloko, I mean, they, Ron Cottrell's talking to him, but right now I, I still put that on Murphy for leaving too soon before the screen was yes. actually in place. Got so a little antsy. 143 remaining. Pertain. Sends it back up high to White. Miles Smith looking for the screen. Shot clock down. Long, long, long. Off the back iron. <laughs> Iggy is going to be fouled by DeBose. Iggy coming back to chase that long. The one thing about it is long shot, long board. Mm -hmm. Almost guaranteed. Yep. Man, that almost, that was close too. For DeBose, oh, it's only logo. number one and 15 foul. In the bonus, no, seven. Shot clock reset to 20. Wow, Smith, oh, that's well off. You could tell that one came yeah, out a now. little short. Good, uh, good contest, too. Retain. Drop feed to Gomes. He brought the ball down. Lose, who's got it. Honor diving for it. Gomes is the first to it. DuBose, jumper from baseline. It won't go. And there's going to be a foul on DuBose on the floor yeah. after the fact. I think he may have pulled Bertain down or something. I'm not sure, but the official on top of the play was witnessing what was happening mm, in the floor. He was right corner. on top of it. While we're chasing the ball with our eyes, he's still <laughs> right. focused in on what's happening between the players. And that's going to be the second on DeBose, team sixth. So Pierre's going to come back on for the final 57 while DeBose checks out. Aaron and Corpus Christi would like to tie it up, maybe go ahead, cut it to one. But needless to say, they want to be successful in this possession. Gates on the defense. They give it up to Bertain. Iggy setting the screen. Back to... Hairston, Gates, with him. Nice Hairston, play. nice drive. Stayed to the with lane. it. Everybody's looking to Miles Smith. Also. Everybody's looking for Miles, and Hairston identifies that. Hey, guess what? They left gets the this. crease in the lane right there. He's not going to miss it. For Jordan Hairston, he's got ten. Gates had it for a moment. A little step back, flies one up. No, Jalen Gates. Oh, how about nice Hairston? Play, how about Hairston going and getting that basketball? Honors with the last chance. Tries to throw it up off the rim. Can he get it again? Iggy? Oh, oh boy, that would have been amazing. That would have been amazing. But we probably did not play that final t nine seconds the best possible. We were a little erratic. But we did get two shots up at the rim in the process. We'll go to the locker room down by one. But... 43-42 the score. Islanders trailed by 18 at Houston and came back to make it close. It was a yeah. five-point game. Let's see if we can have that same type of second-half surge and see if Houston Baptist cools off at least a little bit. <laughs> well, Jalen Gates and did the, miss those two shots. Maybe he's going off. Maybe he's <laughs> Maybe. <going> off. <laughs> Maybe. We shall see. Uh, we got some stuff coming up at the halftime. We'll reset what's going on in the Southland Conference. We'll look at that women's basketball game from earlier. Islander sports in action. Amazing day yesterday for Islander sports. Baseball, softball, beach volleyball, tennis. A lot of great things happening. More in play today. We'll try and bring you up to speed on what's happening around the horn in Islander athletics. 43-42 Huskers by one over. Huskies over your, your Islanders by one here at the half. We'll take the break. Stay with us. 
Islander basketball returns on KDF 47. This Chris Six Sports production. And a gaze. Oh! You scared me to death, dude. You know, I'm watching this game. All right. <laughs> I'm very happy we weren't on on. We were not on air. <laughs> I know. God, that kid could not miss, though. This is a good, very good thing. I saw this. Who produced this? Uh, I think it was, uh, was it Blake. Nice. Really well shot. It is well shot. Near people have already left. <laughs> don't, don't bring them back out. <laughs> yeah. Get some murder ball. <laughs> you ever seen murder ball? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Welcome back to Islander Basketball here on the Islander Digital Network powered by AP Texas and, of course, KDF 47. This Chris Six Sports production able to bring it to you this season. Thank you again to Chris Six, by the way. Another great year on the air. This is our final regular season game. And uh, from this point forward, we'll be hopefully moving forward to the Southland Conference Tournament, games that can be seen on the Southland Conference Network but also can be heard on the Islander Digital Network. And uh, so we're looking forward to being able to, well, excuse me, not on the Islander Digital Network. That's actually going to be on our radio partner, 1440 Keys. So ways to follow that. Hopefully, we know we have women's basketball because they are the regular season champion. They'll be playing Saturday at 1 o'clock as they'll have the double bye in the Southland Conference Tournament after winning today and securing the top spot all by their lonesome selves. Congratulations to yes. Roy Chadwick and his amazing team for what they've done. And the Islander men win and end today. There are other scenarios. Uh, if, if they were to lose, they, they still could make it. But let's not focus on that. Let's just focus on winning, getting this one over with, and getting it done. CC Rims on the court right now. Wheelchair basketball athletes getting it done. I'm telling you, lots of respect. Yes. Lots of respect. It is not easy. I've done no. a story on these guys, and it is a workout. And they uh, and a half. They, they make it look easy, and it is not Focusing on the game at hand yes. here, 43-42, Huskies by one. Let's get you some uh, HEB halftime statistics. First leading the way for Houston Baptist with 16 points is Jalen Gates on six of eight shooting, four of five from three-point range. Ten points for Ian DeBose coming off the bench today for some reason, three of three from the field. 
two of two from three, two of three from the foul line. Leading rebounders are two apiece. Uh, three separate athletes. They have 13 boards in the half, six assists. Uh, Murphy and DeBose each with two. They have 13 turnovers, though, in the first half, which is a number that, that we've seen more reminiscent of the Islanders. Glad to see where we're turning over somebody else today. That's kind of helping yes. uh, combat some of that great shooting yes. of, the, or of the turnovers. Well, if you're looking for that number, you see 9 of 11 from three. How are they only up one? There you go. 13 turnovers are going to do it for you there. Without a doubt, and, and I'll explain why here in just a moment, another reason why. Uh, the 65% shooting, 15 to 23, 9 of 11 from three, as you mentioned, 81%. Foul line, 4 of 5. Uh, for Aiden Corpus Christi, it is Miles Smith leading with 14 points on 4 of 8 shooting. He's hit 4 trays, 4 of 6, a couple free throws as well. 10 points for Jordan Hairston coming off the bench, 4 of 7. 2 of 3 from downtown, leading rebounder with 3, Iggy Hunt. Ireland with 15 boards, 2 more than their opponent. Opponent uh, 11 assists, 3 apiece, Bertain and Smith. Only eight turnovers, one apiece, eight separate people. Interesting enough. Five steals, one apiece, five separate <laughs> Islanders. Uh, the shooting, 45%, 16 to 35, 7 to 14, 50% from the arc, which is great. And from the free throw line, 3 of 3, 100%. Now, and I mentioned 16 to 35. Those 13 turnovers earlier, they have 23 shot attempts. The Islanders have 35 yep. shot attempts. That will come back to bite any team. Now, if, if, that, if that type of pace is maintained, Yes, I, I anticipate good things for Texas and Corpus Christi. Uh, and you said it earlier, can they continue this pace shooting? I, I don't know. I mean, we've I all said it. Can. Like, uh, Can you? I don't know. I, there, there have been crazier things in my lifetime that I've seen, but that it, w it was pretty impressive, pretty hectic. It would be pretty amazing if they did so. I'll say this, and I hope it doesn't come to it. If you can replicate 81.8% .8 shooting the three ball in the second half, then maybe you deserve to win the game. But I don't think... I just can't see that happening, especially it wasn't as if it was just a total breakdown in defense either. I mean, you saw Jalen Gates, you and I sitting here stunned at some of the shots that he was making, hands in face, great contestant, and it just didn't, ha I mean, it just fell. Without a doubt, it's crazy. Uh, quickly, points off of turnovers, A&M, 22 to 13. In the paint, 14, eight Islanders. Second chance points, all Islanders, 8-0. Fast break, 6-2. Uh, bench points, though, HBU with an 18-15 margin there. Uh, again, our HEB halftime statistics. HEB. Now with curbside and delivery service, if you haven't taken advantage of this, what, are you crazy? Yeah. I mean, just type it in, <laughs> send it over, <laughs> and they bring it to you. Oh, it's awesome. It's fantastic. It's great. It's fantastic. Thank you again, HEB, for everything you do. We'll take a quick break. Come back. We'll t bring you up to speed again on that women's game. Look at those numbers and what's going on running the Southland and what in Islander sports. Stay with us more to come. 43-42 Huskies over the Islanders here at the break. Remix to the YMCA. I didn't know we needed this. Oh, there's always something. Ah, <laughs> oh, Southeastern score. We were up 1 0 going into the sixth. What is that, softball? Yeah, that was game three. We <laughs> lost game two in the pit when it re resumed today. Yeah. How did, uh, what time did the baseball team play today? They played four. So they're probably underway right now. I'll tell you right now, I got that. My phone down here, is it in my pocket? It's in my pocket, I think. There we go. Just getting underway. Yeah.
Once again, we come to you from halftime at the American Bank Center here in Corpus Christi, Texas, 43-42. Your honor trail the Houston Huskies here at the half. Uh, we've broken down some of the stats from game two. Let's look at game one for a moment. Honor women's basketball victorious, 58-47 in the opener today. And with the win, secured the number one seed and Southland Conference regular season title for the very first time in program history. Uh, just unbelievable effort and got to be incredibly pleased. Royce Chadwick, very proud of, of what he's been able to accomplish. His eight seniors, this was the year to do it. it you was. got eight seniors, you get it done. It really was. When they got that trophy, this place erupted. It and, was fun. and well done, well deserved. Now it, they have bigger work to do. They'll play 1 o'clock Saturday to open the tournament next weekend. They'll get the double bye. Last year they had to play all they had to play four games yeah, to read. lose by one I know. in the conference final. You know, but this time they'll have the double bye, so we will see how they transpire. By the way, it was Jaleesha Booth, 19 points, Alexis Bryant, 13. Uh, Emma Coleman O'Brien with 10. Not a shock, it's those three that lead the charge. And I and I told Doug on the broadcast, look, you see Day Day Evans, what stands out is only four points for her. Someone needed to step up, and it was Delizia Booth. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Quick note from the Southern Conference, other game in play right now. 60-49, uh, Northwestern State leads Central Arkansas. That's in the, sec and the uh, second half with 15 to go. Other games have not started yet. We need to take one more quick break, and then we will reset, get ready for the second half. 43-42, Islanders trail the Huskies here at the American Bank Center. Stay with us, more to come. Islander basketball on KDF 47, this Chris Six Sports production. Where'd Jaime go? I would just watch. You got this. You know, you, you know, you're taking a, eh. taking a smoke. I don't think he smokes, but he's taking a smoke. Oh no, he does. Oh, no, he, he does. Oh, he definitely has a smoke oh, break then. <laughs> we needed to get that in before that clock hit two. <laughs> It, trust me, Young. I think he wants to be looking like that. Right? I think this is an intentional, an intentional move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he works out like every day. He's on the treadmills and stuff doing stuff. And if we go up against a team with a fat coach, he just, just hates him. He goes, "You lazy slob." <laughs> he goes, "He works out like every day." You know. <laughs> I still got to go set up the entire show after this. I got to leave at 515, I told Steven. Piece of cake. What, two minutes? Yeah, two and a half minutes, three minutes a day? Piece of cake, man. I can do three minutes standing on my head. <laughs> Throw something behind me. It's like a whose line. With who, you know, whatever's <laughs> happening behind me, I have no idea. All right, here we go. Getting ready for the second half here at the American Bank Center. Stephen King, Jeff Dubroff with you. This Chris Six sports production of Islanders basketball, the final one of the 2019-2020 basketball season. A uh, quick note from uh, Islander baseball. They won last night 3-2 to two in dramatic form. Uh, tonight, well, today they started at 2 o'clock. That game in the bottom of the first. Uh, two outs, still 0-0 in that contest. Islander softball, another tight one today. They lost 2-1 in game three of the series, lost the series 2-1, but Southeastern Louisiana is one of the premier teams in our in our league, so Andy Corpus Christi has shown that they're more than ready to compete. Yes. Lots going on. Islander Beach Volleyball knocking off number 20 Tulane yesterday. They had two matches today. We'll try and get an update on that. And, men, and Islander Women's Tennis knocking off McNeese yesterday as well. Big day. Tony Lewis on the overplay with the steal. 
So hoping for a big time weekend for the Honors. So the Honors get the turnover to start things off. Lob feed to Elijah Schmidt. He's got McKenzie looking for Miles Smith. Uh, how he got it there, I'm not sure. Miles, hey, little goes. floater DuBose was a little soft coming out on him yep. and gave him the room to launch. And Miles is going to take advantage of that. You Without can't let doubt. him have room, especially when he's feeling it like he is today. As he has been recently in particular. DuBose, jumper, it's up and good. The help D came out from Peyton Smith, but DuBose is just a strong scorer. Oh, nice Tony pass. Lewis, that's, that's one of those... One of those difficult choices. He got ahead of the defense, but it's got to be almost a perfect pass. Gates gets to the free throw line and knocks it down. On the little crossover, got himself free, 47-44. And finally the call comes as Elijah Schmidt. What he did, the up fake was outstanding. Yes. Good but effort, too. It was not the best pass from Miles. He went out there. He got it. Almost I agree. lost it. Phillip McKenzie picks up the personal. His first team first. <laughs> Elijah Smith stepping to the line. He is shooting two. Reigns in the first nicely. We're going to cut it back to one, 47-45. I've said it before, offense is going to happen. That's oh, going to yeah. happen. I'm totally confident mm -hmm. in that. It's going to be the other side of the floor that makes the difference the rest mm -hmm. of the way here. Schmidt, this one goes off the back iron, so it's a two-point contest, still one possession. And luckily for the Islanders, although pa on paper it doesn't matter when you get the game, on paper it looks like the defense should show up. DeVos in deep. Yoloko, oh, he, that was a blind pass backwards. It happened <laughs> to find Gates. Elijah Smith had his back turned to the play, so unfortunately. Oh, Miles nice Smith, play. nice steal as they tried to skip it across to DeBose. Miles Smith, left free for a moment, thought for a minute he was yeah, also going to pull up, pull that trigger. Tony Lewis inside out. They kick it back to Peyton Smith, back in on the repost. Tony had it knocked free. Loose ball, who's got it? Elijah Schmidt. Oh, oh, he missed it. Tony Lewis gets the board. He gets it. It took about two or three efforts. Yeah. But staying with the play of the Islanders, tied at 47 to Bose. He's going to be drawing the call. DeBose just aggressive going towards the defense, catching the defense, backpedaling. And it's going to be on Peyton Smith. That's going to be his second. And that was one of those plays on the other end. Elijah Schmidt was so wide open. I think he was shocked by how wide open he is. Sometimes he that happens. Threw it up. And yeah, exactly. Sometimes that happens. No harm, no foul, though. Yuloko gives it back up to the inbound man, Murphy. Gates trying to throw up a prayer. Nothing there. He was too out of control. Ron Cottrell can't expect him to be bailed out. He was not. Bertain on a little drop feed inside. Tony Lewis, here comes the double. Skips it across. Bertain open for three. Count it beautifully. Bertain on the feed inside with mm -hmm. baseline reset. And Tony Lewis greatly was patient. Kick to the wing. Three ball to Bose. And that's going to be well short. And this Islander offense just thrives on off ball movement. And that's what they're getting from Miles Smith. That's what they're getting from Nolan Bertain. It's converting into open looks. They're going to go to that same set once again. Here comes Tony Lewis. Wanted to go baseline with the left hand. Tried to finish. Elijah Schmidt, left hand finish. A nicely done offensive rebound. Keep on building. See what you can get here. Force them to have to take some shots they're not necessarily comfortable with. Gates couldn't get the shot off that time as Harrison did a nice job getting over the screen. DuBose knocked away Mo for a moment. Loose ball on the ground, tie ball, possession arrow belongs to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Jackson Stint's going to be coming along on for Houston Baptist along with Perry Francois. 16-34 on the clock, Tony Lewis. He checks out. Stint, I think, came on for Yuloko. No, Yuloko stayed on the court either way. We'll reset the lineup first. It's Gates, Stint, DuBose. Yuloko and Murphy for HBU. Perry Francois, Nolan Bertain, Jordan Hairston, Elijah Schmidt, and Miles Smith. 
Highlanders up five now. They've had a nice little run here before the first media break. Trying to drop it in deep to Perry Francois. He'll wait and now try to bury with the left hand. Off the window he does. He just was so patient. Waited for some clearance. Had some defenders go away and then set him up for the left hand hook off the window. You didn't see Perry play a lot. Not a, not a lot of minutes in the first half. First points there of the game. DeBose nicely, a very strong physical play. Ron Cottrell calls a timeout. We'll take the timeout as well. 16.05 on the clock, 54 49. Honors by five. They trailed at the half, but have off to a nice little stretch here early in the second half. Jeff Dubroff, Stephen King, stay with us more to come. Honor basketball on the Honor Digital Network, powered by AP Texas and on KDF 47. That's for six sports production. Television is so different than radio for me. Oh, yeah, right. Because I have all of this for radio, and I have so many different reads and things that I could use. I, the one thing I have to remind myself to do is at least do my billboards. Yeah, right. You know, that's the one thing I have to – everything else doesn't matter, you know, and in, in comparison. Starting. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Putting glob on my pants. I'm kind of going to gross. Fifty-four, forty-nine. The score: Islanders by five over the Huskies at the half. They trailed forty-three, forty-two. Islanders on a twelve-six run to open things up. It was a timeout called by Ron Cottrell. Needed to Just stop. a little heads up for the uh, for the team at the studio. The next dead ball will probably likely be another <laughs> st- another media break coming up, as that one was called by the coach. Just the way it works with these TV games, but they look good right now. I mean, you're looking right now. The game plan of getting the ball down low to the bigs is working. Perry Francois, Tony Lewis, Elijah Schmidt look good to start this second half. Jump double. Perry Francois, how about the look from Harrison to Francois across the lane, the hands to secure it, the up fake and the finish. We'll take that break. Three point play chance when we come back, 54-49. Francois, great finish on an outstanding look from the guard, Jordan Harrison. Stay with us more to come on under basketball returns in a moment. Thirty. Come to you from the American Bank Center in the final regular season home game for Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. 56-49, they lead over the Huskies of Houston Baptist. The Huskies defeated the Islanders earlier this year in Houston. Islanders looking for a little bit of revenge and with the win today, secure their berth into the Southland Conference Tournament. Quickly, let me thank all of the great partners. HEB, the country and in suites in Fairfield and in suites in Moore Plaza. Evans Glass Service, Chris Six Communications, The Waves Resort, Dave and Buster's Network Cabling Services and AEP Texas. Great Partners of the Islanders on the digital network for basketball this year. Can't say them enough. It is Perry Francois going to the line to try and finish the three-point play. Just previously, he had a nice little jump hook off the window. This time took a great feed, took contact, found it, found the bottom of the bucket once again. So for Perry, he's at the line. Well, you're nice seeing- I'm, 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 I've known Perry for a long time. If you could only understand the improvement in his like free throw shooting, just the technique. 
over time. Gates trying to get free, and Jordan Hairston is is he's gotten the assignment of like you are going to shadow him oh, everywhere. Yes. Debose skips That's it bad, all bad, the bad. way out. Turnover. Uh, smothering defense, forcing the turnover. It's not that the effort wasn't there in the first half. They're just forcing bad passes this time around. It looks good. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Perry Francois. And Gomes, Perry, instead of just kind of backing in, he led mm -hmm. with the shoulder. And while some, you might argue it to a point, you got to be a, yeah. be a little bit. No, that's the right call. 57-49. Yeah, Jordan Harrison has the uh, the daunting task of trying to slow down Jalen Gates. Well, he's done a good job Cuck's thus Haugen, far. Cuxhagen from McNeese, who leads the country in three-point shooting, he didn't do anything against us because of Jordan Harrison. He's shadowing him the game against McNeese. Nice, D. Nice effort from how how Harrison did not lose, lose the, the ball, ball. I have no idea. He'll hand it off to Bertain. Here comes the double quickly to Hairston. Left open for a moment. Kept alive, but Murphy was the first one there. Double team. DeBose stripped by Perry. Good no Francois call. Francois with the fingertips. Nice dash. Nice dash. Oh, oh no. They're going to wave him off saying when he regathered. He pulled his pivot. I don't think so, but the official right next to Willis Wilson says so. He took a great feed. Wow, 57-49. Gates, high screen from Gomes. In and out, <laughs> tipped out by DeBose though. DeBose tracks it in the corner, and what's there gonna be? Is there a foul on the Islanders? I think pursuing the play was Elijah Schmidt. No, they're going to call it on Perry Francois. Iemi is going to come on for Gomes, and Pierre is going to check in for Murphy for HBU. Islanders still up eight. 57-49, eight is their largest lead. Pierre, we're looping him over the top. DeBose now defended by Harrison. Gates has got Bertain on him. And, and it's going to be out of bounds. Izzy Yemi tried to sweep it through, lost the handle. So Francois had a couple nice. I don't know if, how much he did on that one, other than the Yemi, Yemi kind of losing the basketball, but he's been involved in some good defensive scenarios. Miles Smith. Sends everybody, everyone in motion. Trying to break down Pierre. Miles work. Harrison, catch and shoot three. It's good. Jordan Harrison, Miles Smith. Honors can knock down trays. Yes, they can. And Houston Baptist lets them up. Taking advantage. 60-49, Pierre on the right side. DeBose. Willis Wilson telling those guys, see the ball. DeBose for three. Wow. I mean, just... I mean, Miles was up with him, but he had a nice little step to uh, step forward to create some space. Miles Smith, I don't think he saw that for the moment. Yeah. He was looking somewhere else when that pass was thrown. Francois kicks it back out. Bertain for three. Great rotation on the basketball. Touch rebound. Elijah Schmidt. Oh, no whistle. Oh, my goodness. And Bertain jumps into the passing lane. Oh, he landed on him. And the official said that he hit the ball. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he hits the ball if he lands yeah. on him. And Elijah Schmidt did the right thing by getting him up in the air. Elijah Schmidt had a beautiful up fake. Peyton Smith's getting ready to come back on. Gates gets to the free throw line. That little jump shot we're accustomed to doesn't go. And, Bert, and Jordan Hairston comes up with another rebound. Bertain back to Miles. Nothing there yet. Oh, just a fortunate break for the Islanders. And he's out of bounds. Just an unfortunate scenario. Jave Lampkin's going to come on. Peyton Smith has come on already with 12.54 remaining. He'll come on for Batane, and Iggy Hunt's going to check in as well for Elijah Schmidt. So 
with the media break just looming with under less than a minute. He's going to get some of his guys a breather. He may make the change here, but, he is, but it's vastly important. Thought I saw that as well. Iemi hands it off to Pierre. Pierre goes strong. Iemi, oh, stayed with it. Well, Iemi. Gives it up to Lampkins. In deep, skip. Hairston for three. It's good again. Nice. Jordan Hairston. Pretty, pretty as pretty can be. Knocks it down, back to a nine point lead, 63-54. Stent up faking, nothing there, kicks it around. Pierre had the baseline taken away, has to try and reset, wants to attack, goes behind his back, loses the basketball, but, and that should be an, oh my goodness, they're gonna call the blocking foul. <laughs> there was the no call on the landing on there, and now, for Francois, keep your head up. You did a good job. Uh, none Just of didn't get the call coming your way. 63-54. It'll be Huskies going to the free throw line when we come back. 11:50 remaining here at the American Bank Center. We got an update when we come back. We'll share with you from the Southern Conference scoreboard. Stay with us. More coming your way in a moment here on KDF 47. This Chris Six Sports production. Yeah, saw that as well. I got to go to this Myers Championship game at five. When tomorrow? To, or, well, I'm going. It starts at five. It's oh. It doesn't look like it's going to start on time though. You said you're leaving here in five fifteen. Well, I have to do the show at six, and I'm going straight to Whataburger. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. With 11.50 remaining, 63-54, Islanders lead the Huskies here at the American Bank Center. We've talked about it earlier, win and in. So yes. you, you control what you control. And, and if the Islanders do win, they do get in the Southern Conference Tournament. There is another scenario brewing, though, uh, with Central Arkansas taking on Northwestern State right now. A little, a little over six minutes remain in that contest, with Central Arkansas trailing 80-65. Now, if Central Arkansas loses, it doesn't matter doesn't what happens matter here, the all. Islanders are in. But again, control what you can control. Go in, winning. Also get the win and you can get a higher C. Without Don't a doubt. for that eighth spot. A lot of things can happen. Again, a and Corpus Christi we knew coming into today could come in as high as a six seed. Uh, but a few particular things have to happen and uh, I'm not trying to focus so much on everybody else's issues. Get through the next 11 and a half, or 12 minutes or so and you focus on where you play next. The Yemi gets one of two. Eight point game, 63-55. Peyton Smith up against Jalen Gates. I mentioned earlier, William Gates from Hoop Dreams, that is his father. That's incredible. Tony Lewis on a Beautiful interior feed by Iggy Hunt from the top. All three of the big men, all four, excuse me, have played really, really well. And they've played really well as of late and why they've had some late season success. And that's what they're going to have to continue to play well for them to be successful in the Southland Tournament. Yes. DeBose. Nice block. Block. Nice block. Oh, my goodness. De the, the hand was on the ball. I can't talk about any other contact prior to, but... What knocked him backward was Iggy Hunt's hand right on top of the basketball. That was I a saw nice Iggy block. Hunt do that to Shamarcus Kennedy of, of McNeese. 
Caught him right at the top, blocked it, and just put Kennedy on the ground. <laughs> and Kennedy's been the most <laughs> Oh, nice how block. about Iggy out of nowhere getting that one? Hanging a minute, will uh -huh. it go? No, loose ball. Pierre sends it forward. Yayemi, nothing there. He'll hand off to Gates, though. Gates will sneak. Oh, Tony challenged the, challenged the shooter, but just got a piece of him. He did his job getting up on the shooter as he was the last defender up against the, the jump shooter, Jalen Gates. Really nice job there by, Eli, or by Iggy Hunt, excuse me. The reaction off the floor, we call it the calf jump. You know, no, you don't have to dig deep. Your calf mm -hmm. jump, you get up and you use that length. And it looked like for sure he had been beat going to the hole. Yep. Miles Smith returning. It's going to come on for Jordan Harrison. Great minutes, Jordan Harrison playing some great stuff right now. Yeah, he's been a great. He's been fantastic all game. Really been fantastic the second half of the season. 16 points for Miles Smith leads the way. Free throws are good for Gates. Gates now with nine, no, excuse me, 20 to lead all scores. Smith with 16, Harrison with 16. Brain and Corpus Christi. Islanders handle what was just kind of a little soft pressure on the inbound. Peyton Smith. Lampkins showing up fake. Throws it off the leg of DeBose as he was trying to an interior feed to Tony Lewis. Kind of got tight. Tony had been pushed off the lane a little bit, so there wasn't a whole lot of space, a lot of room to work with. 15 seconds on the shot clock. That's a little off the mark. You can see that one drift left, yeah. right out of the hand. DuBose, crossover, gets it to the corner. Pierre, nothing there, DuBose, up faking. He likes that step back. Yes. Yayemi. Good defense. Honors. Iggy. Tony Lewis and them continue to fight. Iggy and Tony shut it down. And it'll be Iggy going to the free throw line. A little unorthodox as he was caught in the double, but he got the shot up knowing the contact was coming. Yes. And look, these two big men, Tony Lewis and Iggy Hunt, have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that, that defense on the other side is so <coughs> valuable. It's priceless. And they've been great this entire second half. He is shooting two. Third team foul against HBU. Beautiful rotation. Bertain's going to come on for Jave Lampkins. Yuloko is going to come back on for Yayemi. For Iggy. Nice and smooth. Looks good. Back to 10. 67 57. Under 10 minutes remaining. Stent. Going to get rid of it. And he knocks it down. You, you just, you, you, you uh, soon as you take a little bit of a nap defensively. Yes, he did. And we've mentioned how good this team is at shooting threes. You give them an inch, they're going to make it. In deep now to Iggy. Gets it back up. Quick swing. Looking for Peyton. Nothing there yet. Tries, tries to break the angle. Nothing available. Iggy tries to put it off the floor. Goes to that length. Ooh, Legault stays with it, and there's going to be a foul on the floor. And I think it's going to be on Stent. They did, I believe. Called it on Jackson Stent, and I really didn't see the play as I'm kind of shielded in some sports spots yeah. here by the head coach, Willis Wilson, and that time I was. They're going to say not on the shot, after the shot. Chasing the I rebound, was, I believe. coming down. Skipping it over. Oh, a little a and Corp. Okay, Willis Wilson's like, that happened well, right in front doing? of me. He's like, what are we doing? Are why, doing? why are we throwing three-foot passes? Yeah, it, made, it wasn't the smartest decision there by Peyton Smith. Well, after the three they gave up to Stent a moment ago, they would like to have answered with up yeah. some points. Don't want Houston Baptist to get on a bit of a roll here as they've cut it to seven. Pierre. 
Yoloko. Nice look from Pierre, by the way. What was a 10-point lead cut to five, two possessions. Here you go. We talked about it on Wednesday. How can they respond to punches? You're going to see right here is they're going to bring in Elijah Schmidt and Jordan Harrison, try to get some spark off the bench. Indeed. Tony Lewis splitting that jump double, and Yuloko, who's a big man, Tony really did a great job backing him down. 69-62. Pierre. Can't do that. Can't. People are just late getting out. Got to be careful. Like as we said, we, we take little naps. This team is more than capable of shooting their way back into yes, a game. Yes, they are. Miles Smith up through Iggy. Nothing there yet. Now they get it deep. They're going to call him for the travel. Took a little. And, and, and truthfully, I believe I saw that. I saw the play as well. I and mean, Stephen, what's incredible, they're still shooting the ball. Seven, they're shooting 73% from three. It's a four-point game to note. What was 10 down to four. Very quickly. Eight minutes remaining. That's a, that, and that can be a very costly turnover. Yes. Pierre. Gets it to Murphy. Murphy on the crossover, tries to go base on a little fade. Won't go. Rebound Yoloko. Block Stitt with it. Who's got it? Loose ball. So a little, a little chaotic, a little erratic in the post. But Andy Corpus Christi prevails. And Nolan Bertain caught the ball and was turning inside, just kind of brought it up, and it slipped right out of his slipped hands. Slipped out of his hands. 7.33 in the clock. Yeah, it'll be HBU's basketball again, trailing by only four. 69-65, 7.33 remaining. We'll have more when we come back. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas, and, of course, on KDF 47, this Chris Six Sports production. I'm going to disregard this for a while. Miles is having trouble. So just kind of. Yeah. Time to ignore technology for a little bit. Something's broken down here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Islanders led by 10 just moments ago, but the Huskies have whittled away, taken advantage of a couple Islander turnovers. Now it is a four point contest. 69-65. Again, 16 points apiece, Miles Smith and Jordan Hairston. Yeah, I mean, you said it. They can shoot the ball really well, and you give them any sort of wiggle room, they're going to take advantage. Combine that with a couple of unforced turnovers, they're right back in this game when the Islanders had an opportunity to kind of separate themselves as we get to the final seven and a half minutes of the ballgame. Looking at, uh, I believe, at the halftime turnovers, AM Corpus Christi had eight. They already have seven here in the half. DeBose kicks it to the wing. Back up to DeBose. Gomes calling for it. DeBose go, decides against it. DeBose. Just hang on to the ball, Tony. <laughs> hang on to the ball. <laughs> they get over the timeline. While Clock is the Islanders' friend, Hairston, they're going to call him Elijah Smith over the back. That's going to be the 16 foul. It's, it was not necessarily the, you know, Willis Wilson, while it may be an open shot, it's not Don't necessarily the shot you're no. looking for. There's a reason you have 30 seconds to work with on each possession. Again, right? an incredibly confident shooter. And As he, he should be. 100% believes that was going in, and, I, and it looked it like it was like going it was. in. You know, and he, he feels he, he can shoot any time. And that's, and that's going to benefit him in his career unbelievably. Gomes, handoff to Gates. 
Gates oh. can't finish. Tony Lewis there, blocked by nice. Elijah Schmidt. Oh! oh. Now it's going to be free throws coming up as Elijah Schmidt picks up his third. A chance to cut it to two. It'll be Philip McKenzie. Iggy Hunt getting ready to return for Texas A&M Corpus Christi more than likely for Elijah Schmidt. Something to take note of, Stephen. Yes. The Huskies are in the bonus for the next 6.45. Islanders have only seen four fouls called against HBU thus far, so a few, a moment, uh, few away from that. So uh, they just have to play clean. Keep play sound and play that. clean and keep them off the line. If you're Coach Cottrell, you probably want your team to attack and try and get to that free throw mm -hmm. line. And they got a couple guys that can do it as well. Ian DeBose being one of them in particular, and DeBose is getting a little bit of a breather for the moment here. 69-67. Retain sends it back to Harrison. Pierre was stepping into that line. Harrison tried a little extra, finds Tony. Oh, nice. How play. about Harrison? Right place at the right time. And good awareness to get rid of the ball right to Tony Lewis. That was a, a very important bucket. Yes, for the Islanders. 71 67. Gomes. He's going to be fouled by Tony Lewis on the hand check. It's going to be a one and one. Tony Lewis, his third foul. Huskies 9-11 from the line today. Gomes just kind of lulling him to sleep for a moment, trying to say, hey, here, come on. I'm looking for the handoff, mm -hmm. looking for the handoff. 68% free throw shooter. Ryan Gomes. It is a one and one, is it not? I'm trying, the other side of the floor, I mean, they were having a huddle over there. If someone would have just set up on the far side. Wow, a little, little nuts. Just identifying. Iggy Hunt, little cut, little cut feed into Tony Lewis, loose ball. Not sure, was there contact? I'm not sure, but needless to say, it's another turnover. Pierre goes all the way to the rim, lays it in, it's a two-point game. So that did not go at all the way Coach Willis Wilson no. would like it. First the turnover on their side and then an uncontested layup for Miles Pierre. And I don't think he liked the spacing either. It wasn't great. The ball was kind of just bouncing around places too. And that was not the, the correct angle. a and Corpus Christi in a little bit of a, a, a spiral right now. Willis mm -hmm. Wilson needs that timeout. Time he's going to take that timeout. Down. And he's going to bring him over and talk about it. It is a 30-second timeout. So that one, yeah, that one, a little bit of a struggle yes. in those last couple possessions on the on the offensive and defensive side. So, Aiden Corpus Christi has their work cut out for them, 71-69. And we're trying to determine here. I'm thinking, trying to look at some of the numbers per se. Islanders led 69-62. Well, they, had, they led us by as large as 11 was the Islanders' largest lead. They led by 11 with about 14 minutes to play here in the second half. Yeah. And ever since, the, the Huskies have just been able to kind of chip away. And you have to know, Coach Wilson's timeout there was just had to have told the guys, hey, calm down. They're still, in, they're still winning this game. It has been a 12 Four. Miles Smith nice with the steal. Nice strip and the land. And that is what a leader does. Comes right out with an answer. Fantastic play by Miles Smith. He's nails. And right now he is challenging Pierre. Pierre, I think he's a little taken aback by it. Gomes, little float jump hook. It's a big answer. Miles Smith works to the left wing. Back to Miles' left corner. Tony Lewis trying to get in position. Gomes fighting him to that spot. And Gomes is just going to land on top of him. Gomes tried to take away baseline, but was never yeah. really in a good position. It was actually pretty sharp of Miles Smith to capitalize mm -hmm. and 
identify a vulnerability in the defense. Just get fouls on the board too. Try to get yourself into the bonus so you can at least be even on that front. Yeah, drawing the call was pretty important. Tony Lewis in deep to Iggy Hunt. Nicely done. Nolan Bertain drops it over to Iggy Hunt. Talk about a, a, a vulnerability in the defense right there. Someone got lost when they jumped out on Tony Lewis. Kind of left a big hole in the lane. Islanders capitalized. McKenzie. Oh, the strip on Miles. They're going to call it on him. They're gonna, it's going to be his second, team ninth. So it'll be free throws coming up. Well, needed to play it clean. So McKenzie back at the line. Got to play some of this stuff clean the rest of the way. 75-72. McKenzie, three of three from the line today. Back to the two-point game. Jordan Harris nice. does. They left him open, took a nice little rhythm dribble forward, knocks it down to Bojan. Yuloko looking to return. They've done a lot of this without them. Francois looking to come back on as well. Miles Pierre kicks it to the wing, three ball. Quan is that Quan Murphy? Murphy? How many has he made after the whistle? I mean, he has been absolutely He's on fire. It's a one-point game, 77-76. Going to come down to this final stretch. We're under four minutes remaining. Hairston defended tightly. Pierre not giving him space. Nothing there yet. Back up to Bertain to the high post. Hunt loops it over to Tony Lewis. Spinning. A little fade jump shot. Will go. No. Murphy with it. HBU can take the lead for the, for the first time since they gave it up at the beginning of the half. Yeah. 3-0-3. DuBose and Yuloko will come back on. 3 0 on the clock. Perry Francois to come on for the Islanders. Final stretch and we return. Islanders by one, 77 76 over the Huskies of HBU. Stay with us. You got to go? All right, I got, we'll cut you free. It's a good time for you to go. Thank you. All right, man. With 3.03 remaining, your Islanders have a one-point lead led by as much as 11 that at the 13.58 mark here in the second half. They've seen it get whittled down over these last few moments down to one. The Huskies have the basketball with an opportunity to take their first lead again since I believe like the first possession of No, well, that's not necessarily true. But early on in the second half, they did have the lead coming into, ha into the second half to 43-42. Oh, it's going to annoy me greatly. I'm going to have to figure this out. You know. That's why they allow me to go back and look at the play-by-play. -play. Islanders took the lead 40. As it was 45, 44, 47, 44, HBU. And a turnover. Islanders get it back. Islanders took the lead at the 17-28 mark and held it for a long time and still hold it to this point. 
But it's a one-point game, a huge possession here. Hairston left open for three. That's off the mark. Elijah Schmidt with the rebound. He'll kick it back out wisely. Oh, he turns it over. Gates picks up his dribble to Murphy. Murphy. Miles Smith strips. Loose ball off of the Islanders. So while well, AM Corpus Christi got an offensive rebound, kicked it back out. They lost the they lost the ball. They fortunately recovered on the defensive side to stop the fast break. And to get the deflection out of bounds up top to Yoloko. With Hairston on him, which is not what they want. They finally get the switch back. It's Francois bodying with Yoloko. High screen coming. Dubois. Murphy finally misses one. Murphy gets a rebound, though, out to DeBose. Quick swing to Stent. Right there by himself was Murphy. It might as well just be an assist. 48, excuse me, 78-77, under two minutes to go. Stent with the air ball, but somebody lost Murphy, and he was able to get there all by himself. Miles Smith trying to break down DeBose. Not there yet. Gives it up to Bertain. Back up top. Hairston loses his feet for a moment. And he got the timeout. Miles Smith wisely with two seconds. The Islanders were not going to get a shot off. So at least from an inbounds play, they can get the shot. Hairston kept maintained his dribble to the point. But that was a wise decision with 1.34 remaining. Heads up from one of the Islander captains. As I mentioned earlier, Central Arkansas losers today to Northwestern State, which secures the Islanders' spot in the Southland Conference Tournament. They will be going. It just depends on the seed. But at the same time, you want to be going into that tournament with momentum. The Islanders have won a couple in a row, at least and want to maintain that as they go forward. With two seconds remaining. The kick it to Bertain. Bertain for three. Won't go Francois. He secures the board. Baseline, okay. The Auditors will have the ball. The shot clock started late. They got the shot off in time because it was on the catch and shoot. The rebound is going to go to the Islanders, and they'll just give them the 20 seconds. Tony Lewis will come back on. So Lewis will come on for Francois. But it was a huge offensive rebound for Francois. I can promise you that. In too deep. Tony Lewis is there, though. Miles Smith in too deep. Islanders back up one. Dubose. Yoloko wanted it, couldn't get it to him. Shielded, and there's going to be a travel on Dubose. They said he took the hop when trying to deliver the dish. 79 78. Gomes will return. A little bit more length in Gomes. Tony Lewis, a huge offensive put back a moment ago. His 12th point of the night. Honors with four players in double figures. And they're all on the floor. Shot clock down to 15. Game clock at 52, Islanders up one. Miles Smith told to go with 12 seconds on the clock. They get it to Bertain, looks in deep. Elijah Schmidt with the drop feed. Nice look, play designed perfectly. Bertain to Schmidt, Schmidt drops it over the rim. 12 points for Elijah Schmidt, the senior on senior day, making a huge catch and finish. That's just the way you drew it up. You draw it up, say delay till 12, 
find the guard, get it to the post, and post drop it in. And that's exactly what happened. It's a three-point lead with 42 seconds remain, only a one-possession game with one of the hottest three-point shooting nights I've seen by any team, HBU having the basketball. HBU, 75% from three thus far, 12 of 16. Gates with four, Murphy with three, DuBose with three. For a and Corpus Christi, Miles Smith got four trades, along with Jordan Hairston's four trades. Right now, it's not about the trades for the Islanders, it's about the defensive stop right now. Getting the stop. I like how Bertain kind of took a jab set. Got Murphy a little off kilter as he was with that little slow feed. Murphy trailed the to, to Bose, not a shocker. And it was Tony Lewis standing firm, fouled by Jackson Stent. Tony just held his ground, hands up, and DeBose could not get up and over the six foot eleven Tony Lewis. That is only the sixth team foul, so the Islanders will have to inbound. I think they thought they were going to the free throw line. Not the case just yet. Peyton Smith looking to return for AM Corpus Christi. Did they get him in time. They did not. They, the official on the baseline did not see that they were trying to inbound. They were trying, excuse me, not that they were trying to get someone to the scorer's table. Harrison. Where was it? What? <laughs> Who did he foul? I'm trying to figure. Did it was just a late whistle on Jalen Gates getting through, but it stops the clock with 17-4, and, and Jordan Harrison was going to open space to try and burn more clock, but they got a late whistle. Harrison trying to make this a two-possession game does. 82-78. 19 for Jordan Harrison. Gives himself a little bit of a fist pump after making the first. Iggy Hunt's going to come on for Tony Lewis. Seventeen seconds remaining, five-point lead. Stent to inbound. He'll give it up to DeBose, and Miles Smith will pick him up there. Now actually drops back, kind of a false read. High screen from Yoloko. And the SWAT, Stent catches it though. In and out, Yoloko with it, who's got it? It's gonna be Iggy Hunt and he's gonna be fouled. So Iggy Hunt made the defensive board when he had to. And the Islanders can, I believe, take a deep breath, but at least a couple free throws will make it a little bit easier. Iggy Hunt. By the way, if you've noticed that Jeff is not here, I did not mention it. Jeff had to get back to the studio. He's got a broadcast at 6 o'clock tonight, so we appreciate him being with us all day today uh, for both men's and women's basketball. Iggy knocking it down. <laughs> 4.5 left. He's going to send, Willis Wilson's going to send everybody to the half court. Islanders looking for a four-game win streak. Shots off. Clock starts. DeBose is blocked by Iggy. Iggy blocks the three. Just a little bit of an exclamation point. 84-78, the final Islanders win. They are in the Southern Conference Tournament. They were already in. They didn't know it, but they were already in. But it's best to control what you can control. Great job, Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. Again, after losing the services of Jay Sean Talton Thomas, they have found something inside and found just this, this outstanding rhythm that is working for them. 